Hey there, welcome to Old Man Runner. In today's video, I'm gonna compare this, the Brooks Transcend 7, to this, the Brooks Bedlam 3. I did a series of videos, which I'll, I'll link there, about buying shoes online and trying to use uh, online resources to figure out what type of shoe you needed. And the Brooks Online uh, Shoe Finder is really super. It's got a sort of decision tree and you go down and with your running history and a few other simple little tests it asks you to do, it recommended that I take a support shoe. So after that, you've got some choices to make and I decided to go with one that was energized. I mean, who wouldn't want an energized shoe? Um, but I picked one uh, and it's this the Bedlam 3. And then I tried to compare it with this, my previous uh, Brooks Transcend 7, which is also a, a support shoe, but is of a cushioned variety. One of these shoes is supposed to be cushioned and one energized. So I made a video to go out and try and see. Let's go running. Both of these shoes are the same size. Well, on paper. They're uh, a UK size 12, a US size 13, male, and they are an EU 47.5. I have 12 pairs of running shoes. These two are the heaviest. I'll put the links in the description below and the, the calculations and all of that. Brooks say the Transcend has a 10 millimeter drop and weighs 10.7 ounces or 303.3 grams. The Bedlam has an 8mm drop, but oddly is slightly heavier at 10.8 ounces or 306.2 grams, despite the fact that they say the DNA amp, which is the foam in the shoe, is 20% lighter. Actual shoes I have in the UK size 12, the US 13, etc., are 391 grams or 13.79 ounces for the Bedlam 3s versus 387 grams or 13.65 for the Transcend 7. So no real difference. I love the plushness of the upper of the Brooks uh, Transcend. Uh, it's lovely and padded around the heel. Uh, there's a structure to it, really nice padded tongue. Uh, I also like the appearance of it. Um, but the laces are super, really easy to get tight, but they're, they're a sort of softer material, which goes with the whole thinking of the shoe. The upper in this uh, Bedlam 3 is very thin. There's a thinness to the whole part of it, thinness to the sides here, really thin edge fabric. Uh, there is structure to the heel, there's this plastic piece, um, but the collar is thin. It didn't cut me like my, my Clifton Edges did the first time. Um, the laces are thin uh, and there's lots of holes in the fabric. Let's stick a light in and see. So you can see the fabric there. You can see the, the holes coming through. I think uh, it's another attempt to make this a light shoe. Um, I don't think they succeeded. Uh, not based on the weight or my feelings for it. Um, but uh, in summertime, maybe that sort of mesh helps with, with, with some breathability. Can't see it doing much good in winter. When I first tried these shoes on, they felt narrow here. Certainly, although ostensibly they're the same size as the Transcends, they felt narrow here just walking around the house. And uh, I'm not particularly tall, 5'8", 5'9", on a good day with the wind blowing in the right direction and gravity cancelled. Uh, but it, uh, but I seem to have a, a long foot or a wide foot. I take a UK size 12, obviously. So, so what happens is I find it very tight here. Um, but when I went out running, actually where I felt tight was really here. Um, which came as a surprise and it was quite painful. So I went out running, say, after 
Uh, you know, the first couple of K, you're, not, you, you're just getting an initial feel. After 5K, it was sore. And after the 12K, I was quite happy to stop running. They were really tight in here. And uh, that came as a surprise. I mean, when you look at the bottom of the heel, you can see a certain narrowness to them. Um, but what happened was they both have uh, removable uh, insoles and I took them out earlier today. So this one is from the uh, Bedlam 3. It's very, there's a very thin feel to it. It's barely, barely there. There's only about 12K on these. And this feels much thicker. This is from the, uh, from the Transcend uh, and there's 300 and something kilometers in these. Uh, but they're barely worn in. Um, but there's a much plusher feel. But when you lay one on top of the other, so I'm gonna, hopefully this will work. You can kind of see the yellow edges and uh, not helpful against my, my t-shirt of roughly the same color, but anyway. Uh, you can see that here, the, uh, you can start to see the yellow coming through. So this is wider. It's also, I don't know if you can see it that way. It's also taller. Uh, so it, again, it's as if they try to save weight um, by making this as thin as possible. Um, but kind of pointless. The whole overall shoe is so heavy. It's down in the bottom where it's really heavy. And it's kind of like throwing sandbags off when your balloon's about to crash. Uh, it's too late by that point. Both these shoes have great grips. Uh, I've criticized some of my own shoes in the past for, for, for lack of grip, but you can see the, the outsole here. There's a layer of, of thin plastic on these. Kind of looks and feels like a car tire. Uh, and the same with these ones, uh, very good grip, good at dispersing the water, all that kind of stuff, so no problems there. The Bedlam in, uh, in Ireland, at least, is only available in this color. Uh, Brooks, no matter what you buy, they always give the colors a number. Uh, I think this is 012, I'll put the link in the description. But, but they've also described it uh, for once as, as a sort of black. In some, uh, it's, it's like a pint of Guinness. Guinness isn't actually black, it's ruby, it's red. Uh, and in some, uh, in some, uh, instances, this, this looks sort of red or maroon. Um, it's also available in the United States. It's available in a sort of whitish color, which I find much more attractive. Um, but the Transcend is available a whole load of colors. I think there's five colors. Uh, I particularly like this one. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a color way I've really liked ever since I got it. And I like the sort of patterning in around the laces as if it's a computer uh, chip. This is also available, well, the non-support version of this, I think it's called the Levitate. Um, and it's available in some fluorescent in the sort of carbonite colors, uh, which I think would be really handy for running in winter because it's very reflective. Um, and and uh, I think more shoes should be available with much, much more reflectivity. This, there's a sort of certain shininess off this, uh, which is kind of cool. I haven't run at night and I won't be going to in these. So which of these two shoes would I recommend? Well, this shoe does exactly what it says on the tin, to use that old advertising thing. Uh, it's supposed to be a comfort support shoe, and it is. It's. Uh, it's fantastic for that long, lopey days where you just want to put on a pair of shoes that when you slip into them, they feel comfortable. When you head out on the road, they feel comfortable. And at the end, when you take them off, your feet feel comfortable. I'd highly recommend these. Oh, well, these are the Transcend 7. We're now in late November. I'm imagining that Transcend 8 will come out in early January, maybe February. Um, could be delayed because of coronavirus. But these are great shoes. They're probably going to be cheaper after Christmas when the next one comes out, uh, which I don't expect to be much difference. This is, this is the seventh iteration I've had. I imagine the eighth will be pretty similar. These, on the other hand, well, no. I mean, if you want an energized shoe, buy a carbon fiber plate or something. Uh, this is, it's using the wrong tool to do the job. Um, I found it an extremely uncomfortable shoe. And as I was finishing the run, I was saying, oh, God, you know, all these shoes, I typically try to run 350, 450K in them, something like that, uh, 300 miles or thereabouts. Um, and I was kind of feeling guilty about this shoe. And I was thinking, do I really have to, run all that distance in it. I don't want to leave it just lying around the house. And I came back and then I, I've had it a while because I've been making other videos and, and, and stuff like that. Um, but anyway, and I hadn't run it. Uh, but anyway, I rechecked the Brooks returns policy and it's 90 days, 90 days, uh, which apparently you could be running it for the 90 days. Um, <laughs> but I've only run it on one day uh, and a bit of, little bit of filming. Um, but it was super easy, print off a label, uh, it goes back by DHL, which can be accessed by my local post office, which is a couple hundred yards up the road. Uh, super. It turns out there's another shoe in the Brooks range that I think would be a, a, a better shoe than this for me to try. So it's not available in my size at the moment. When it is, we'll test it out uh, right here. I hope you found this video interesting and uh, useful. Uh, I'll put lots of links in the descriptions below. And as always, if you put comments in, I'll try and address uh, them and answer them, or there may be other things you want me to look at. Well, apart from the fact that the shoes are going off today. Uh, there'll be a subscribe button there and some other videos there that link. Um, but thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.